So, hi everyone, uh, I'm Zdenek, CTO at Corasip, and uh, this is going to be just 10 minute uh, talk, uh, so unfortunately no Q&A by the end, but feel free to grab me here on ex in the exhibition hall, I'll be around for two days for sure. So any question, just you know, probably, uh, stop by and we can, we can talk about that. Uh, the topic of uh, this talk is about the uh, wireless uh, signal processing for ultra low power IoT. We did it with, uh, with uh, CEA, Letty, in France. So firstly, let me introduce our, our companies, just two slides, and uh, then we can dive into, into details about uh, what uh, the CEA did and uh, the results. So who's Corasip? Yeah, well, we are a uh, leading provider of RISC-V IP. Uh, so we have a family that's called uh, BK, uh, B Barkeldian family, that's a, a tribute to Berkeley guys, who invented the RISC-V in the first place. Uh, we also have an EDA tool uh, by which you can customize this core. And recently, uh, uh, we introduced also, together with WD, uh, the support package for Swerve cores. The company was founded in 2014 in Czech Republic. Uh, now we are, uh, the, the HQ is currently in the Munich in Germany. The R&D is in the, in the Czech Republic. We have offices here in the US as well as in China. We are founding member uh, of RISC-V Foundation. We are quite active in several task groups. And uh, we're actively also contributing to some open source projects such as LLVM because we are LLVM based or OpenOCD and other product projects that, uh, that uh, we are using. Well, who is uh, CEA, Letty? So CEA in general is, uh, I'm quoting uh, Thomson Reuters, the most innovative research organization in the world. If you look at the number of employees, you find out that it's about 20K. A lot of PhD students, a lot of researchers there. If you look at the number of patents uh, that uh, they were able to do in 2018, it's more than 700, which is, which is a nice number. And more importantly, the CEA, Letty, uh, this is uh, like an uh, institution of CEA. They are focusing on micro and nano technologies. Uh, the headquarter uh, is in the Grenoble in France, and uh, they are very, very successful uh, uh, in creating startups uh, that uh, you know comes from the research that they that they are doing. And they are also uh, uh, Risk Five Foundation member. Now, the CA uh, was trying to solve uh, um, some some issues, and uh, the project uh, was dedicated to some ultra-low power IoT wireless communication. So they, they, had, they got some requirement lists and uh, they look at the solutions out there and they find out that, okay, there are several uh, uh, standards for, uh, or protocols for IoT communication, such as uh, you know, long, range, uh, long range things, short, uh, short range things, uh, the Bluetooth, LoRa, whatever. Then there are, on top of that, there are a lot of proprietary uh, protocols that you have to handle as well. And the lifetime is quite long, it's 10 plus years. So we have to be able to somehow update the products and uh, keep them alive for such a long time. So how to handle this, this, uh, uh, this challenge? Well, the answer is that, okay, let's have some programmable solution, which is the software defined radio. So it's relatively easy to add new protocols because it's just a firmware. It's ready to update over time, so 10 years of, of, of life is okay as well. And since you have a programmable solution, uh, there are other benefits that, uh, that comes with, uh, with this approach. There are already some commercial platforms that are based on other architectures, such as PowerPC or PC in general, or ARM as well. But when they looked at the, at the list, they found out that, okay, there's actually you know, nothing for, for low power IoT, actually, and they're also not, not cheap solutions either. So they decided to, to uh, you know, try to find out different ways or different CPU for ultra low power IoT. So and they you know, created a list, created a list with some requirements, like more precise requirements, such as, okay, in the case of ultra low IoT, wireless DSP requires uh, you know, linearity, a low distortion, which means that the operation is uh, is not really saturating or overflowing. You have to have different approaches there then uh, you have a lot of things are done in a complex domain, such as you know, complex multiplication and so on. Uh, there are some other um, you know, uh, impacts on the multiplication, how it's done and so on. So they found out that there is no actually like off the shelf solution on the market. So they went with RISC-V plus ISI extension because the, the beauty of RISC-V is that it allows you to do customization. It allows you to do 
uh, the exchangent. So this is one of the reasons why they, why they, they, they selected the RISC-V as, as architecture for, for this, uh, this project. They looked at several uh, implementations out there and you know, for the ISA uh, exploration uh, or extension, they uh, selected a few of, uh, of um, applications or protocols that uh, they would like to handle in this device. Uh, one of them was uh, uh, the FS key, dem uh, FS key dem demodulation that's used in a Bluetooth or, or Signfox. The other one would be, is, is LoRa and uh, you know, a couple of more. Uh, of, of these algorithms. So they were looking at these algorithms, trying to find out common features uh, of, of these algorithms. And this was the starting point for the ISA exploration. And as you can imagine, there is plenty of opportunities uh, if you look at such algorithms. So, you know, uh, you can uh, look, uh, you know, which instructions you actually uh, are, you know, are looking for, the data types. The, the complex multiplication, splitting the, 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 uh, the operands of operations and so on. And uh, also they, they wanted to have a really minimal uh, set of instructions. Uh, they eventually would like to do a really fast turnaround of the exploration. So they, although there is a manual approach such as that you change compiler, you change RTL, you change simulator manually, then see the results. For them, it's what, it wasn't enough. Although this, its approach is okay, but from, for, them, for them, it wasn't enough. It wasn't fast enough. So they contacted us and said, "Okay, you have risc five compliant IP. You have tools by which you can customize things. So let's let's use your, let's use your solution to find out the the final ISA ISA uh, uh, extension." And so within a couple of weeks, uh, they created the, the extension that satisfies their needs. Uh, it's about 13 instructions. They call it like zero cost, zero cost in terms of power. Uh, they did a lot of uh, reconfigurable hardware stuff there. So the multiplication is done very, in a really smart way. And so when everything was done, think, uh, on a BK3 core and in the studio. So if you look at the numbers to, to, you know, to see uh, where we stand, so they took our baseline BK3, no compressed instructions, uh, just I and M, and uh, they did some, some testing using the benchmarks, and uh, they used uh, uh, global foundry identity to nanometers to, to, see, uh, to, to get the PPA in the end. So the baseline, you can see the numbers, it's uh, about 31K, it uh, runs more than gig, and the power is about 3.5 uh, microwatt per megahertz. And then when they added those 13 instructions, that's obviously because you added some instructions, the hardware is bigger, it's about 40K. The frequency dropped because of the multiplication improvements or, or multiplication architecture that they implemented. But still, it's okay for them. I mean, the frequency is quite high anyway. But more importantly, the power number stays almost the same, which means this is the, this is the zero cost, as they, as they call it. If you look in the, in the uh, you know, uh, more data, uh, then we, we can find out that uh, for, you know, on, the, uh, on the right side, the baseline, uh, you have, a, uh, you have a cycle cycles that you have to have for, for each sample in the, in the algorithm. Then you have a frequency, the minimum frequency to be able to run the algorithm itself. And then you have a power peak. And thanks to the instructions and the extension, as you can see, uh, on, the, on the other side, uh, the, the number of cycles that they actually needed to uh, to accomplish the same, same task is, is in some cases is, uh, you know, less than 500, uh, 550%. So, uh, you know, the, the saving is, is important and it is big for them because then they actually, they, they you know, managed what the, they, they wanted to manage. So they have a solution that's risk five based. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's nice things. They have their own custom extensions, thanks to the studio. And the power numbers are really what they were looking for to, to achieve the goal in this, in this project. So the last slide here, uh, to keep 10 minutes deadline. Uh, so, you know, quoting their, uh, uh, their worlds, uh, you know, thanks to the BK3, uh, thanks to the studio, you know, they were able to achieve uh, this task in a really short time because of the fast turnarounds that you can have thanks to the studio. But more importantly, as Caroline mentioned, it was fun because um, for them it was you know, really important to see the results within a couple of days to, to see you know, where we stand because they evaluated several uh, ISA extensions, not just one, they, they, not just those for a team. They, they did several iterations to, you know, to find out the different uh, options 
uh, for, for uh, the algorithms or test benches that they were looking at. But anyway, uh, they manage it, and now we have a solution that's really what they were looking for, for low power IoT, uh, with ISA extensions that you know, they, 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 they designed, and PPA clearly shows that this is the right approach for them at least to, to achieve uh, the, you know, the project goals. And that's, that's all. Again, the questions, just you know, stop by um, you know, at the exhibition floor, because we have a booth there, or anywhere, uh, you know, anywhere here. I'll be here around for two days anyway, so just feel free. Thanks.